automakers and governments around the globe are poised to move electric vehicles in and gas and diesel vehicles out. The electric vehicle mega trend is unfolding and insiders know the time to get in on nickel and cobalt. The two critical elements to electric car batteries already in high demand is now. Don't miss this chance to get in on the opportunity to invest in physical class 1 nickel and cobalt before the mass market catches on. Go to www.silverbullion.com.sg slash EV and participate in the electric vehicle revolution. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Silver Bullion Television SBTV. I'm Stephen T, and this here is um, Electric Vehicles Metals Market Update, dated April 2021. Um, this is the first in a series of episodes that we'll be doing, covering the first quarter of this year in terms of a look back and review of the EV metal space and of course if you haven't done so already please subscribe to our channel hit the bell button for notifications and updates from us as well as to give us a thumbs up or a like if you do enjoy what we do and comment below because we always love to hear from you and we truly do appreciate your support now at the time of reporting in this the start of april 2021 nickel is currently trading at just around us sixteen thousand dollars and we can see that there was a steady rise as we look further below right through 2020 so from the time Patrick was giving um, us tips on coming in to nickel last year in March in our last update. You can see that the price rose all the way up and of course came down from its uh, near 20,000 high. And even though it's come down, demand is still growing for nickel and the general trend is upwards for all commodities. Nickel has a 2.2 or 2.3 million ton market. And according to Ken Hoffman, senior expert of basic materials practice at McKinsey and Company, he told BNN Bloomberg last week that there are three key reasons. Reason number one, China. China has been challenging Europe's hold at the number one position for EV metals all through last year. And given the statistics that show that they are one of the largest consumers now in the world economy, there has been a war going on between Europe and China in terms of who is going to have the best battery material. Part of the reason for this is that China has come out saying that they want to create the best batteries, batteries that have the longest range, and batteries that can last over the longest distances. And to do this, they say they need to have this become a nickel-heavy battery. This has also caused nickel to do very well. Another reason is that as soon as these traditional auto car makers saw that future battery technology would be heavy on nickel, they gathered all their inventories and stocked nickel, leading to worldwide supply dropping. Finally, reason number three is that historically nickel's demand was solely driven by stainless steel, where 60 to 70 percent of nickel, class 2 ferro nickel as it is known, still usually goes towards. However, now that EV batteries are needing class 1 nickel, as well as to possibly go nickel heavy in terms of battery weight, and where possibly 90% of an EV battery may soon be comprised of nickel going forward, all of this will be causing nickel prices to ultimately stay up. So we can see that China and Europe are involved in an EV war, and it largely involves nickel. But just how far has the EV market grown in China in general? Canelli's, the research firm, released its figures that forecast 51% growth for EVs in China this year, adding that EVs will represent one-third of car sales in 2025. And looking at this chart here from the business wire, we can see in teal, in teal colored portions here, the rise of the EV sales market. Just very quickly back to the article. The business wire reports that the Chinese government has been supportive of the transition to EVs, but several changes to EV-related policies and consumer subsidies in recent years disrupted the market, and car makers struggled to build sales momentum. According to Chris Jones, chief analyst for automotive at Canelli's, he says, prospects are very good for China's EV market in 2021. And there is already an excellent network of standardized public EV charges in China, good government support, and now a return to strong consumer demand. Also from Canelli's, the vice president there, one Miss Sandy Fitzpatrick said, with a share of just 6.3% of all passenger cars sold in China in 2020, EVs still have many years of growth ahead. Indeed, China's EV market alone has been a huge driver all on its own. 
and it's expected to cause demand for nickel to skyrocket, pushing supplies, well, the need for supplies up across the world as part of follow and effect. Um, so much so that people are saying that the competition is not just between Europe and China, there's a battle within China itself. Now, in China's EV war, there's an article here from the SCMP describing the scale of that war. They are saying, here's how the tech giants are even coming in to shake up the world's biggest auto market. It's interesting here, the article shows that the Chinese EV startups, led by Neo and Xpeng and Li Auto, have already made a mark for themselves at home and abroad. However, the feel is growing as more tech giants are entering the markets. They're entering to compete with the existing um, startups and big tech giants like Baidu in 2017 already roped in more than 50 partners, including Ford and Mercedes-Benz parents Daimler. Baidu is also tied up with Geely, which already owns Volvo cars, as well as a stake in Daimler. And plan to use Geely's Zetiang car production site for the design, development, and manufacture of EVs. So, notably, other Chinese tech giants have also weighed in. Alibaba Group Holding, which owns the SCMP newspaper, last year acquired an 18% stake in a joint venture between China's largest car maker, SAIC Motors, and Zhangjiang High High Tech Park Development last year. Now, they're going to tie up to develop EVs under the brand of Intelligence in Motion, or IM, and these cars will be AI-assisted and able to park themselves. The tie-in there between EVs, AI, and big tech is an interesting one. Now, Huawei, which is sort of state, um, uh, it's controversial in the sense that it's private but has state connections, has formed an alliance with Chang'an Auto and Contemporary Amprax Tech Limited, China's biggest EV battery maker, to launch an upmarket car brand. So we're seeing big tech giants come in, and even the American tech giant Apple wants to go into Korea to sign a deal with the Shable Hyundai Motors for EVs. In China, Beijing, the government, wants 20% of all new cars hitting the streets to be EVs by 2024 as part of its Made in China 2025 Industrial Master Plan. So how have the EV startups responded? He Xiaopeng, the founder of Xpeng Motors, says more Chinese tech juggernauts will enter the EV sector this year, injecting new impetus into the world's largest EV market. So he expects the competition. Mr. He Xiaoping was probably anticipating this next story, also from the SCMP regarding China's EV war. It says the tech giant Xiaomi enters the fray with a multi-billion dollar investment into the world's largest EV market. The article goes on to say that the Beijing-based company, Xiaomi, that's behind the Mi Android smartphone brand, will kick off its electric car project with an initial investment of 10 billion yuan or US $1.5 billion and expects to spend up to US $10 billion in this enterprise over the next 10 years. What's interesting here is that the tech giants are entering in and meanwhile, some startups like iWays, which is Tencent backed, backed by some big tech giants in their own home country, wants to break out into Europe because even though they've opened this Jiangxi plant with an annual capacity of 150,000 vehicles. They're facing stiff competition at home and they're looking to grow into Europe, helped by stronger demand for emissions-free cars. Interestingly, you can see that iWays has pursued this strategy since it was founded in 2017 as it looks to grow outside China's fiercely competitive domestic market. Some of our viewers may remember iWaves from the company's recent incursion into Europe. Um, they've been making great strides there, and, and the Fully Charged show, which is incidentally a very good show that we recommend for our audiences on this channel as well, uh, they were talking about how across Europe, prices for iWay cars were going upwards of maybe 33,000 euros. So it shows that while China has indeed got a huge market domestically, there is a reason Chinese EV startups are looking to go into Europe. It's because 
Europe's still number one. Now, according to mining.com, their article says global EV sales push battery metals deployment in the second half of 2020, according to a report by Adamas Intelligence. Adamas Intelligence biannual report says that in the second half of 2020, global passenger EV registrations grew by 58% year on year. The report goes on to say that the top spot in EV sales was taken up by Europe, where a splash of buyer incentives increased purchases by 127% in the second half of 2020, when compared to the same year prior. Now, this growth resulted in a 174% rise in watt hours of battery capacity deployed, a 205% increase in battery cobalt deployed, a 192% increase in battery lithium deployed, and interestingly here, a 135% increase in battery nickel deployed versus the same second half of 2019, the year prior. It also goes on to say, further in the article, that when you look specifically at battery-grade nickel, the market researcher for Dharma's Intelligence noted that 53,150 tons of the metal were deployed in batteries of all newly sold passenger EVs combined in the second half of 2020. This meant a 69% rise that was compared to what was deployed all around the world in the same period the year before. Now we can see that bio incentives led to an increase in adoption in Europe for EVs, um, while nickel itself as a base metal, as an element, is growing in terms of demand because it's essential for deployment in EV batteries. So what do we make as investors of the market for battery demand. Simon Flowers of Wood Mackenzie, also an author of The Edge, sat down with his chief research director, Gavin Montgomery, and came up with four points that might be helpful for us retail investors. Or if you're a commercial investor, you probably want to listen as well. This here is the article from Simon Flowers and Gavin Montgomery. And they start with their first point being that demand for batteries is all about electrical vehicles. Around 90% of battery demand will come from EVs over the next two decades, and growth in portable electronics and energy storage systems is modest in comparison. For Flowers and Montgomery, EVs are going to grow at a phenomenal rate. We've just uh, increased our forecast to an average of 15% a year over the next 20 years, and on our forecast, there are 10 million EVs on the road today, There'll be 100 million in 2030 and 400 million soon after 2040. Now, the second point for them is that for EVs to go mass market, it is now all about battery costs. Consumer anxiety around range will be rapidly dispelled by higher energy densities and the prospect of accessible, fast charging infrastructure. Flowers and Montgomery have added that battery costs have more than halved in five years to US $150 per kilowatt per hour. And today, this is on track, if it continues at this rate, to go all the way down to US $100 per kilowatt per hour, which would be seen as, in the past, it would have been seen as the barrier, often known as the commercial threshold. Now for Flowers and Montgomery, their third point is that NMC batteries will be the dominant chemistry for the next decade at least. Most automakers are pinning strategies on these ternary batteries and ternary just means in a set of three lithium ion batteries with cathodes made up of the oxides of the three nickel, manganese, and cobalt, which already supply about half of EVs. Further in the article, it says that solid state batteries are perceived as the holy grail in the battery space, given their potential for high energy density and safety. Their view, however, is that these next gen batteries will only start to be commercialized beyond 2025. And even then, will initially be the preserve of higher-end applications such as luxury and sports cars. So they're not expecting SSB to come in too soon. Now, in terms of their fourth point, they've said that the supply of key battery metals, excuse me, needs to develop to meet the transformational demand from EVs. For them, China's grip on the supply chain of these metals remains a concern though there is no immediate resource supply problem to justify prices rallying today. And what we see today is more of the EV exuberance that's got investors excited in recent months. But for them, further out 
That's where the challenges look, loom as the supply challenges for lithium, cobalt, and nickel as EV sales ramp up will be faced. And the risks around each of these varies considerably. Now, it's interesting that Flowers and Montgomery uh, believe that M and MMC, excuse me, NMC batteries will be the dominant chemistry for the next decade because NMC refers to nickel, manganese, and cobalt. Yet, as uh, most of our audiences may also be aware, uh, sometime in the last few years, Tesla announced that they were going to take a more nickel-heavy approach when it came to developing different cathode systems. If you can see in this diagram here, um, Tesla have been trying to come up with their own version of EV metal batteries in terms of using nickel, and more importantly for nickel investors, if you look at all the cathode systems, two out of the three systems require nickel. Now, essentially, an investment in nickel at this stage almost, uh, you don't want to say it seems foolproof, but whether you have a nickel-heavy approach or um, stick to an MN NMC model, that's a bit of a mouthful, you're going to seem to need nickel. We may also wish to look here at a second Adamas Intelligence report. And this one says that high nickel cathodes dominated the passenger EV market in 2020. Adding that high nickel cells made up over 60% of passenger EV battery capacity deployed globally in 2020. The report details that over 60% of all passenger EV battery capacity deployed globally in 2020 was in the form of high nickel cells, such as NCA or NCM628 series cells, or Europe saw the greatest deployment of high nickel cells in 2020, predominantly NCM6 and 7 series, followed by China, which was dominated by NCM8 series, while the US use a high nickel NCA. This is consistent with what we saw with Tesla and their more nickel heavy approach, while the rest of the world still uses the NCM system and some places using a bit of both. Now, furthermore, nearly 30% of all passenger EV battery capacity deployed globally in 2020 was in the form of low nickel cells such as NCM 1 to 5 series cells. So all in all, we can see that the importance of nickel um, is quite clear here because it's an essential element. There is a growing need for nickel and this is expected to continue. All right, everyone, with that, that's it for this week's edition of SPTV's EV Metals Market Update. And as Patrick always says, silver up and saddle up. And we'll see you again very shortly. Bye-bye for now. Excited about the opportunities in the coming electric vehicle revolution and looking to invest in this electrification super cycle? Demand for battery metals like nickel and cobalt is expected to rise in tandem with the increase in demand for lithium-ion batteries in electric vehicles. You can now buy nickel and cobalt parcels with silver bullion and have a direct price exposure to both battery metals. You have the option to buy 2-ton nickel parcels or 250-kilogram cobalt drums. Every parcel will be fully insured against loss and guaranteed to be genuine by silver bullion. Selling your parcels to lock in profits is as simple as logging into your silver bullion account, selecting the parcels and clicking sell. Buy your nickel and cobalt parcels now at Silver Bullion's website, www.silverbullion.com.sg slash EV, and participate in the electric vehicle revolution. Interested but have questions? Email us at sales at silverbullion.com.sg or give us a call at plus 65 6100 3040.